Well, this is a um, catch-up video. I haven't had, I haven't made any videos in a, quite a while, and uh, the reason have been just like with everyone else, we've been very busy. <coughs> uh, the yard work takes quite a bit of time, and uh, we've had a lot of little projects here in the house that haven't been really suitable for making a video of or. Uh, the problem is, I, I since I have to do much of the work myself, uh, running the camera and uh, doing that at the same time is just uh, is just too difficult for me. So today on the uh, what is today Wednesday the fifteenth I guess of June, um, I thought I'd show you a little project I'm working on. I'm going to um, I'm planning on doing I'm planning on doing a video of uh, to show you some of the things that Karen and I have been doing the last couple of weeks. But that'll have to wait a bit. <clears throat> uh, I want to get this project taken care of. It's been bothering me for a long time. This is the bathroom on the third floor and uh, this bathroom was originally two s small rooms just with toilets in them. There was no bath and um, uh, as a consequence we tore out, we had to tear out the center wall which was a huge job and uh, we got rid of it. It was not a supporting wall, so it wasn't a problem, but it uh, was a lot of material that had to be disposed of. And then this wall uh, that I'm showing you here the, the, at the floor level had two narrow doors, one for men and one for women uh, for the toilets. And after looking at it for a long time, I decided there's just no way I could uh, change the door frames. So I um, tore the whole wall out, uh, took the wall out from one side to the other and rebuilt the wall <clears throat> using wood stringers and um, and uh, drywall. And that turned out fine. On the right side over there here, uh, this part over here where this light switch is, that is a um, chimney. That is the chimney that goes up from the uh, cellar through the kitchen bathroom below and uh, which we use for the uh, wood stove downstairs. I'm left over with this problem of the door jam between or the um, uh, threshold here. That is what you see there. I'll go see if you can see. bring you in a little bit closer here. What you see here is a beam, an oak, in, an oak beam that actually supports the walls and, and uh, the floor and <clears throat> it is uh, very rough and uh, it had all kinds of cement poured over it and things. When we put the tiles in the bathroom, uh, we didn't tear out the old floor so we have about an inch uh, the, f the bathroom floor is about an inch higher than the, than the um, hallway floor here. What we're looking at is uh, a paper coating, paper covering that we put on the uh, freshly sanded uh, boards, the, the flooring here. And there's about an inch difference, so I'm going to have to make a um, a threshold. I'm going to use an oak, uh, a piece of massive oak, and I'm going to fit it in by putting in uh, laths. Probably I'll use oak laths actually too to make it firm uh, beneath that so that the height is correct. I'm going to make it almost as high as the bathroom, about it, like I say, about an inch higher than the um, than the, uh, the hallway, and I'm going to route the top of the front so that it is round surface so you don't catch your foot when you're walking if you walk barefoot into the bathroom for instance uh, my the bedrooms here are on the right side behind me and uh, on the right uh, i think i've shown you some of the rooms in the past there and uh, this will be our main bath when we uh, move in here <laughs> finally and um, i do want to get this finished then I'll finish off the edge and I have to put um, uh, baseboards, of course, on here too. I'm going to use white 
uh, laminated baseboards in this part of the uh, hallway because the walls are white and it uh, just the simplest way to do it, I believe. So as soon as I get uh, my board made and glued, I'm going to use epoxy, two component epoxy glue to uh, glue a front edge on a lip on the board. Then I'll show you how I'm going to mount it and um, get it up to the correct height. Bring you back later then. I haven't routed the front edge yet, but that's the look I'm going for basically. Um, it's a, uh, it's actually two pieces of oak flooring that I have um, glued together with epoxy glue. They're tongue and groove and I just glued the tongue into the groove and uh, <clears throat> cut it off to the right width and now I'm going to route that front edge. Underneath I've put pieces of uh, the same material, the same oak uh, material that I sawed to for different widths and I just moved them around until the board is supported in all areas. When it's all together like that uh, I will then um, use self-countersinking wood screws, uh, 2.3 millimeter wood screws, very small ones that are used for actually putting down uh, oak planking on floors. And I'll cover the heads with uh, uh, wood paste so they won't be visible. So I'll, uh, when I do the, when I route the edge, I'll show you how I'm going to do that. I'm going to use a round cutter um, and just a very simple round edge on the front. I don't want anything that will catch dust or dirt or uh, that you might catch your foot on. So I'm going to make just a round smooth curve on the front edge. I'll show you that when I do that. Well, this is my workshop. Ha ha. Don't I wish. I wish I had a big workshop like this. Uh, I wish someone had come and cleaned it up for me, but uh, this is not my workshop. This is our this is our living room to be. This is will be our private living room on the third floor, and um, <clears throat> at the moment, I'm still using it as a living room because I have been um, working on the baseboards up here and other and molding and trim. Uh, I finished the. Well, let's see if I can move you around here. Show you. I finished the uh, molding on this side here, or the baseboard. That corner, that corner actually turned out quite nicely. It's a rounded wall corner, so I couldn't um, just put a corner, uh, two boards uh, at 45 degree angle there, so I had to uh, make a piece to fit in turned out quite well. I'm quite pleased with it. The quarter, the, um, the, the, I forgot again what it's called, the molding at the bottom um, doesn't fit well because the boards, the floorboards are actually so uh, out of line with one another. But there's nothing I can do about that. And when we have furniture in here and carpets, it won't be that noticeable. Here you can see underneath the radiator here, I had quite a bit of problem fitting that in. There. So there's my workpiece and my router. Um, it's I'm using a guide bearing cutter, and I hope that it doesn't get into that uh, crack that's in the board below there. We'll have to see if that works all right. Otherwise, I may have to go to using a guide plate on the router. This is a Festool or Festo router. I love their machines. Uh, I really enjoy using this one. I just like everything else I own. I got it on eBay at a very, very good price. It was less than a year old and still had a guarantee when I bought it. Uh, not that I've had to use the guarantee. It's uh, been very reliable and very uh, does a wonderful job. I made all the all of the um, 
the window sills with it, the window, the edging on the windows, and uh, the window sills downstairs, quite large uh, oak window sills I made with it as well. I'm very pleased with it. So I'm going to go ahead and do this now and see if I can uh, get the edge clean. I already did a test cut on a piece of scrap lumber and I'm satisfied with the way it looks so let's go let's see what we can do with it. I have the piece clamped down firmly here. That's very important, of course, you don't want it moving around. Starting it on a piece like this is quite difficult with this with this uh, bearing cutter. I think it's going to be okay. It just barely touches, yeah. It's okay. Good. Satisfied with that. I'll sand the edge a little bit, clean it up, and then oil it. And I'll show you the result. I've sanded this down with uh, 60, 80, 120, 180 paper now. <clears throat> so it's nice and smooth. I wiped it down with a tacky cloth, and now I'm oiling it. This is hardening oil. It's not uh, linseed based. It's not prone to spontaneous combustion. It's a natural oil of some kind also. But um, tongue, I think it's tongue oil actually. And I've had good luck with it and it goes well with the uh, oil that's on these, on these um, oak floorboards. So that looks quite nice. I'm satisfied with that. I'll leave that on there for half an hour and then I'll wipe it down very carefully. It's important to wipe it down when you use a hardening oil like this because um, it, the oil hardened, it really does harden, it polymerizes. And when it does that, <coughs> it can form very unpleasant looking um, shiny patches on the wood. You have to re-sand it and then start over. <laughs> to avoid that, like I say, I will uh, wipe it down with a, with a dry cloth. And then I'll put it, uh, I may actually put it in place today. No reason not to. The sun is out all of a sudden. It's been terrible weather. We've had a very, is this summer? I guess it's supposed to theoretically be summer. Um, it has been a very unpleasant time. It rains at least once a day and oftentimes two or three times a day. It makes it very difficult to mow the lawn, of course. I'll take you over to the library, open the window, and let you have a quick look out. See what our garden looks like. The garden, of course, looks very nice. It looks uh, very verdant and uh, plush and lush and Everything is growing very well, but it's growing so well, in fact, that it's uh, very difficult to keep up with it. Okay. There you see how nice the uh, yard and gardens look. You can also see that the walk is wet. <laughs> kind of started making a path across the garden there with stones. Um, and... She's going to continue with that one of these days when it stops raining enough. I'll move you over here. She has done a very fine job on the terrace here, cleaning the edges and uh, 
trimming it. We, if you remember, in the early spring, we used that new steel uh, pole saw to cut the willows back. The willows were just as, the willows on the left side here are not quite as tall as the ones that were there before. On the right side, we've cut them back here, but you can see how they've already grown. Um, well, probably already two feet, the greenery there. So they really, they really grow like weeds. Some people say they are weeds, but at my age, I can't be planting oak trees. It doesn't make any sense. I, I wouldn't have any joy from them. Uh, I'd be gone before they grew large enough. We put our little puddle up, the little boy with the wings there. I had to re-glue that. Let me get you in there. So oh, I have strategically placed blocks of wood of different height. I made a whole bunch of different blocks, different heights. <clears throat> I've placed them that now on the um, on the beam below there that's going to have to support the whole thing. And I'm going to, and I put some fast setting wood glue, white glue, on on those uh, little pieces of wood that I made there on the just on the top. And I'm going to now put the board in place and step on it, walk on it, put my full weight on it <clears throat> so that it presses down on those uh, on those blocks that will just hold them in place so they don't slip around afterwards. And then when that's done, I'll just um, screw the whole thing down to the floor. So, now I'll go have some lunch while the glue sets up. It only takes five minutes. It's a quick setting wood glue. All right, that's the way it looks um, after gluing the supports to the board. Now I'll just flip it over again, put it back in place, and screw it down. I'll use probably four screws just on the outer edges. Um, it sits relatively tight anyway and it just has to be uh, secured so that it doesn't uh, move. Well, as so often the case, things uh, didn't quite work out like they were supposed to. Um, I put three screws in, held it down perfectly, and on the fourth one, the screw I was using, 45 millimeters long, was too short. It didn't really grab. It started to grab, but then it turned. Uh, it just spun around, so I knew I had to do something else. So I pulled it back out, and I got a 60 millimeter long screw that's 4.5 rather than 3.5 millimeters in diameter, and I opened the the uh, top up for the head of the screw to go in. I used a, uh, I drilled a larger hole, but I didn't, op I didn't drill the hole out. Well, I didn't drill it at all. I used the old hole that the three and a half was in. And as I tightened it down, it cracked, oops, it cracked the board all the way from here to here. It's right at the edge, of course. And the four and a half millimeter was too much, uh, was too, uh, uh, too large diameter. The pressure was too great when the head went into the to the opening. So what I'm going to try to do is glue it. I'm going to spread the. I'm going to put a larger screw in there and open the hole up even further. Put some wood glue in there. 
and um, then clamp it well. And if that works, if that looks all right, if I can sand that smooth afterwards and make the crack disappear more or less, I'll use it. If not, I'll just have to make a new, I'll have to do the whole thing over again. That's just the way it is, part of, um, part of doing this kind of work. Okay, I'll uh, bring you back when I see what happens. Now you can see the crack quite well. I put a big five millimeter screw in at a little bit of an angle to uh, open the crack up as much as possible. I think I will be able to glue that without any problem. Uh, I'll just put the, I'll, uh, I may spread it a little further yet by put, drilling that, by, by turning that screw in a little further. And then I'll thin a little bit of uh, my um, wood glue. I would use two component epoxy on this, however, I, if, if it gets on the surface, and it will obviously, then it will uh, be very difficult to sand and uh, not see. So I will instead use just regular uh, strong waterproof wood glue and clamp it very tightly after I let the glue run into the crack well. And then we'll uh, see what happens. Okay, bear with me. All right. It's been about 20 minutes now. I spread this apart very well so the glue would run in all the, all the way down to the crack. It actually started running out the bottom. I turned it over and uh, put plenty on the bottom as well and spread it apart so that I'm sure that the glue has gone all the way through now, all the way along the whole crack. I'm going to leave the bottom like this. It doesn't make any difference. One of my support boards came off here, so I have a clamp on it. I'm going to now take this screw out, and I'm going to um, put a clamp on it and clamp the crack closed. If I can get my screw back out here. Screw doesn't want to come out. Oh, it's not really. <laughs> so I will also wipe off the surface to make sure that I have um, clamped it in position so that it so that it's smooth. In the end, I'll have to sand it a little bit anyhow, of course. Um, Take off this excess glue now. This kind of um, wood glue can be wiped off damp, and I'm going to do that because I want to get most of that off of there. When it's uh, before it's dried, it's waterproof when it's hardened, but. Um, lightly dampened cloth here and I can get most of this excess off of here then and save me from having to sand it off later because it's kind of sticky when you sand it which isn't surprising okay so that's pretty good it actually looks very good, I think, if I clamp it now. Now you can see the, see the glue coming out, that's good. So, 
wipe wipe that excess wipe that excess off of there I think that looks like it's going to be okay if it is yeah you can just see the little white line of of the glue oozing out there I think that'll be fine okay we'll see when it's done I'll leave it until tomorrow and uh, then we'll take a look at it So that I don't crack the board again, I've done, uh, <laughs> I did it right this time. I, I pre-bored with a nine millimeter uh, wood bore that uh, is just the size of the head of the screws and then bored all the way through with, uh, I went about uh, four, four or five millimeters deep with that and then uh, bored all the way through with a five millimeter. The screws are 4.5 millimeters by 60 millimeters long and um, the heads are about eight and a half uh, in diameter so that they fit in the holes right when that's uh, when I've got it screwed down then I'll just put wood paste on and sanding and when it's dry I'll sand it again I did the other side the same way that way um, well after four or five days of um, fiddling and fooling around with this thing it's finally in place it is uh, now screwed in with four large uh, four and a half millimeter by 60 millimeter screws it doesn't um, it doesn't creak or move or do anything but just sit there which is what it's supposed to do so finally a little project that took a lot more time then, uh, then it might have. <laughs> In any case, it's done. I, I will put um, silicone on the edges there. Right? This, with the walls, the walls have to be still have to be painted <clears throat> in the uh, door frame, and then we can uh, take up this paper on the floor here and oil the. The the uh, sanded floorboards, and we'll be done in in this whole area here. Then, in any case, small project with uh, lots of setbacks. Thanks for watching. Thanks for any comments, and thanks for uh, joining me in my work around the house here. <laughs>